Every entrepreneur has a story. Welcome to Happy Half Hour with an Entrepreneur, where each episode, your host, Brian Carney, will share a drink with a successful business owner and have them discuss their unique journey, gaining insight on what it takes to be an entrepreneur and different ways to get there. Brian isn't just a beer nerd. He's also the co-founder of Rivers Edge Advisors, a financial planning firm headquartered in Delaware, specializing in working with business owners. It's time to pour yourself a drink and enjoy a happy half hour with an entrepreneur. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Happy Half Hour with an Entrepreneur. I am your host, Brian Carney. My guest today is Howie Zales, the founder of HJZ Productions, a multi-million dollar provider of top talent. Howie is an Emmy Award winning camera operator who turned his passion for television broadcasting into several entrepreneurial endeavors. Howie, welcome to the show. Hey, Brian, how you doing? Thank I'm you. Doing, I'm doing great. This is really exciting. So I'm like a sports nerd. So I love talking <laughs> about all things sports. So this is a the fascinating topic for, for me of how you got started. Um, awesome. So anytime you talk about sports, obviously you have to have a have a beer. So I'm going to be drinking a Mutant X IPA from Oscar Blues uh, Brewery, which I which I love. It's in Longmont, Colorado. So we'll give that a rating at the end. Now, nice. We're just going to be drinking some coffee. Uh, so I think that's probably a good choice. Yeah. Excellent. Well, uh, we'll, we'll start at the beginning. I always say, uh, tell us a little bit about your business and what you do. Yeah. So we have two businesses. One. Uh, and they're both based around the uh, television production industry. The first one, HJZ Productions, uh, we hire anyone that it takes to put a TV show together, sports inter- or entertainment event, uh, camera people, audio people, replay people. So if you're watching an Eagles game or a 76ers game, maybe we've supplied the TV crew. Um, in New York, more more likely in New York as opposed to in the Philly area. But um, uh, maybe when the Philly team comes to town, we've supplied the crew for the Philadelphia feed. Okay. Uh, whenever there's whenever there's a sporting event, unless it's like a national game, um, there's always a home and an away show. So there's usually two feeds going on simultaneously, two separate independent productions. And the other business, Veridity Entertainment uh, Services, or VES, we provide broadcast quality uh, events, productions to corporate uh, corporate clients for, you know, fireside chats, corporate meetings, uh, hybrid meetings, fully virtual productions, uh, feature shoots, you name it. Uh, we've kind of live streamed it. <laughs> that, that's pretty fascinating. So you have essentially two businesses that I would say are in the same neighborhood, but maybe di- on different blocks. Yes. Interesting. So how, how did you even get started in this? Like, how did you just, dis- you know, decide to, to go out on your own? Yeah. So I, I knew I wanted to get into television sports uh, in high school. Uh, I wanted to play professional baseball and I knew I needed a backup. And I, uh, there was, I had one spot left in my course schedule and there was an elective TV production class. And it, the description was a trip to NBC studios and a tour of 30 Rockefeller center cool. and to watch a TV show being taped. And as a high school junior or senior, I was like, well, that's an easy a, right. How bad can that be? <laughs> And I ended up falling in love with TV production. And I, just, I knew at that time I had to combine my two, uh, my two loves, you know, baseball or sports and my new passion, you know, TV. That's amazing. And so your, your uh, original journey, it, it, when you, you know, you start working for a company, yep. was there a singular moment where you said, you know what, I got to do this on my own. Is there something that happened to lead to that or. So I, I, you, I started out, um, shooting news okay. as a with a reporter in the field but i knew i wanted to get into sports i didn't know how to do it but i i put it out in the universe i told anyone that would listen i want to be you know i want to get into shooting sports tv and um lo and behold one day uh espn called our newsroom because one of their camera people got sick at a university of vermont basketball game or was going to be called in sick for the next day whatever sure. it was and um, this was, I was in upstate New York at the time. And because everyone knew what I wanted to do, they, they knew who to recommend. And <laughs> I, I got my first freelancing job and I met the right people and, you know, gave 110% and that became another job and kind of snowballed where uh, at, 
soon after, within a few months, I kind of left that news job and pursued a, a career in as a full-time freelance camera operator. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. You ever think about that person getting sick, how, how that changed the trajectory of your life? Yeah. And, um, you know, and part of it, yes, that person, you know, that, that person getting sick or being ill, whatever the case was, allowed me the opportunity, but I right. took full advantage of that opportunity by, you know, showing up 110 percent and and going over and beyond to get the call for the next time because in this field like a lot of others you're only as good as your last performance yep yeah and that, you know that, that old saying i guess it, when, when you're prepared opportunity yeah. comes comes around so you were well prepared i also love the idea that you just started telling people that this is what you're going to do and you tell enough people they have to it's kind of like you ever talk to someone that's going to run a marathon yeah they so the first time they do it, they're like, I'm not even sure I can actually do this, but they put it out there and it, and it ends up happening. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm interested a little bit about the the live streaming part too. So sure. live streaming, I think, you know, really became insanely popular during COVID. So how did mm -hmm. that affect your business? How did the whole pandemic affect your business? Yeah. So originally Veridity was not a live stream business. It was, um, it, we opened it before COVID and it was going to work kind of parallel with HJZ Productions because HJZ Productions deals with all the local crew. Okay. And we opened up Veridity to deal with our clients travel crew. So what we were offering was we'll take on the burden of your travel crew which sometimes on a big boxing show or whatever could be 30 40 people yeah we'll we'll payroll them we'll handle the workers comp we'll handle the um sexual harassment training the workplace harassment training you know take that burden off of the client and obviously charge them for it and that's sure. how we're going to make our money and then you know long story short COVID happened right and we knew we needed an immediate pivot. I I had I'd known about the live stream business uh, being in television. It, it was maybe five years down the road, uh, but instantly overnight, it 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 became it's real. Everyone turned to, yeah. And so I turned to my network of people, and I I met some new people during that time, and I did a lot of research. And um, one of my close close friends is the rabbi at the temple that we belong to. Okay. So I said I called him on the phone. I said, Hey Brian, I said this is what we're going to need to do so you we, you can still do the services. You know, we're going to need to buy these kind of cameras, this kind of a computer, so we can live stream. Yeah. He's like, What's live stream? <laughs> and so, and no sooner were we in the temple setting up all of this equipment that uh, a, a former client called and said, hey, Howie, this is an odd question, but we need to interview nine baseball players in nine weeks, but the catch is the interviewer cannot leave her house. Wow. Can you, can you do that? I said, yeah, of course. And this is <laughs> September of 2020. Okay, so right? the pandemic's so, raging. Raging, yeah. right? <laughs> That's why she couldn't leave her house. Baseball, they were playing in empty stadiums. Right, yeah. Um, it, Like every other sport. And I said, yes, of course. And so the next call was to my wife and I said, Jen, Jenny, this is what I just agreed to. I have no idea how we're going to accomplish it. But uh, <laughs> again, I, I, I turned to my network and we came up with these um, computer capture kits, we called them, or contributor kits. It's a high-end laptop, gaming laptop with a HD camera, a uh, USB professional microphone, ring lights, Ethernet cables, and we we produced content for our clients during the pandemic with these remote capture kits uh, with hot, super high-end athletes uh, for Capital One, for T-Mobile, just to name a few, Charles Barkley, Magic Johnson, Tiger Woods, Michael Phelps. Uh, we would send them these capture kit, these computer kits, walk them through the setup process remotely, Di because it was our equipment, we could dial into the computer and take full control once it hit the internet, focus the camera, change the color temperature of the camera, make sure the audio level was right leaving the camera, uh, the computer, and produce these vir fully virtual productions. And everyone that was involved on our end was in their house scattered around the United States and sometimes around the world. Holy crap. And yeah. you kind of figured that out after you got, you said that you could do it. Yeah, totally. 
That's so great. With the, he- with the help of uh, others. Yeah, sure. So obviously, I mean, that, that speaks a lot. Again, yeah, it's, you know, being prepared when yeah. opportunity knocks, but also having a deep network that you can call on to help you get things done. And if I'm the smarter per- smartest person in the room, we have a problem. So <laughs> that's great. So I- I'm actually interested. So like uh, before COVID, when you're doing you know live productions, was that yeah. sort of like uh, conferences and and that kind of thing, or is it a uh, little bit different than that? Uh, n- n- well, so we transferred. Uh, we really weren't doing this sort of stuff before COVID. Before COVID, this company, yeah. So Got now post COVID. We're still doing these virtual productions, but not to the extent. Got now it. we're doing the conferences, big and small. We're doing LinkedIn Lives. We're doing fireside chats. We we do these hybrid uh, corporate meetings where there's some people in person yeah. and people around the globe watching the stream. Amazing. Have you found that, you know, a post, post-COVID, I guess we're technically post-COVID, that you're finding people being getting sort of like live stream fatigue where they're, Hey, I'd no. rather be in person or is it still a strong business? No, it's still a strong business because it's, you know, it's cheaper for the companies to produce these events uh, without flying everyone in. Great point. Right. Putting everyone them up could, in hotels. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone could be more productive, right? Cause they can still, they don't need a travel day on each end. They don't, uh, it costs a company less money with travel and hotels and dinners and, you know, all that stuff. Yes. They're paying for the production and we provide, uh, and, and depending on your package with our company, we provide a super high end package. Our productions could air on television, right? But right. it still comes down to less money than what it would cost to travel everywhere. To, to, to send 500 people to Tampa. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Well, um, so you've shot Super Bowls, the Kentucky Derby, the Olympics, and even which I have a really soft spot as a kid growing up in the 80s, <laughs> WrestleMania. How does that even happen? Like, how does that come to be? Uh, so it all starts with one one event. I was doing uh, I got called by a third party company to do a horse race at Belmont Park in New York City. OK. And uh, this particular horse race was going to air on NBC sports. And a lot of times to save money, the networks will call a third party company or put a a production out to bid. And these companies produce the event with the network announcers. Um, It airs on the network or it's a time buy some, something, and it saves the networks money. Okay. In this case, NBC sent their top director, John Gonzalez to direct uh, this horse race. And I busted my butt on this show, I, I <laughs> you, you know, and I went up to him afterwards and I, and, you know, thanked him. And he said, you know, you really did a great job. He said, and this is in 2000. He said, Hey, we're starting this new football league in February. Cause this was, I think, September of 2000, uh, called the XFL. Okay. He said, uh, would you be interested? And I said, yeah, sure. And uh, I had never tra- gotten on an airplane for work. I always had driven to Rangers, Knicks, Islanders, Devils, whatever, never right. flown. And he said, why don't we try out your football skills? We'll uh, we'll get you to a few Notre Dame games because NBC has a con- contract for Notre Dame football. Right. And if, if you do a good job, then we'll have you on the XFL. Uh, long story short, I traveled with John Gonzalez and NBC for over 20 something years Whatever he directed, he brought me on to, as well as other NBC directors. And on the sideline in 2001 or 2000, whenever the XFL started, I met the WWE. It was WWF at the time. People just about at the end of that first XFL season before it went away. uh, Because Vince McMahon was the owner of the original one, right? Yep. Uh, Someone at wrestling got fired. Yep. And they needed a backstage camera person. <laughs> and they, they saw how hard I worked on the sidelines. And um, they invited me to come do a few shows. And that turned into 20-something years of traveling with the WWE. I mean, every job is an audition for another one. You're only as good as your last job. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah. Um, you know, as a camera operator, and the U.S. Open is this weekend, the, the week that we're recording this. Right. I am fascinated by how those camera guys can follow a golf ball. Yeah. How it's difficult. How difficult is it? it is it so the, it, it's it's 
easier with professionals and amateurs because that's true. Nine, nine times out of 10, it's going to the same place. It's just how far. Good point. Right? Yep. And there's a, um, in your viewfinder, you can turn, they're called red, blue, green guns. Uh, and I forget the combination, but you turn two off, leave one on, and it makes the white ball kind of pop out. Ah. Yeah. So there's a little, but you still have to have the skill to tilt up and, you know, make it a smooth follow with zooming and tilting and keeping it in frame. And then as the ball lands, if you're on the green, zooming out and showing where the flag is, right? Yeah. So um, it's definitely a skill that is practiced and does not come easily. I can't even imagine how how difficult that is. I'm kind of interested, you know, I so I have three kids. They're They're basically teenagers. But the way they consume TV is totally different huh. than the way that you and I consume it. I, and totally. I shouldn't even say TV because I don't even really watch TV. They, they don't watch it. watch it, right? Yeah, YouTube or TikTok or Instagram Reels or whatever it is. So, how has has that changed your world for you know a whole different generation trying to come in to, to watch TV? Yeah, it's it's changed like in terms of sports. Yeah, it's, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, it, it it's it's totally changed it. Like, um, Bally Sports, which airs a lot of um, uh, regional baseball teams, yeah. has gone Chapter Eleven, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, so now a lot of the leagues are taking back the production of the sports like MLS is now being produced for Apple TV plus. Right. Um, a lot of baseball is being done for Peacock and Amazon prime. Yeah. Um, the MLS uh, M M um, baseball is taking back the production of those teams that got um, caught up in the chapter 11 issues with Valley sports and they're producing now. So the Sunday people, tickets with YouTube TV, I think, right? Yep. Sunday tickets now with YouTube TV. So they've, they're going away from the traditional broadcast networks or the cable networks and moving to the streaming services. Yeah. That really is an interesting thing. You know, I, I was, I was listening to a podcast and I had an interesting question is, whether um, you, you could sell subscription services to, say, the Mets, right? Or right. could you sell a subscription service to Steph Curry? So right. instead of watching every Mets game, you just watch every Steph Curry game. And it, it was kind of an interesting, you know, I think I feel like my kids are more interested. Now, we're, you know, diehard Eagles fans, so they have no choice but to to watch Eagles games. But I think they, they're they more interested for the most of the part, you know, with the, the players as opposed to the team. So that'll be an interesting uh, thing with the streaming platforms to see how that grows. Well, uh, well, in New York, the only way to watch the Yankees is on the Yes Network, which you uh, or the Yes app, which right. is one hundred fifty two hundred dollars a year. That's crazy. Yeah, and Yankees own that, right? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> That's really interesting. Um, going back to 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 your businesses, how do you manage running two businesses full time? You know, that has to be a lot to handle. I have uh, one person that runs each business. So Lori runs HJZ Productions and Jen runs Veridity. And I kind of float between the both. Uh, I kind of float between the both. And I do not get involved in any of the math or Excel, <laughs> or Excel spreadsheets or or I do not, I'm not allowed to send an, an important email without it being proofread. <laughs> There's a lot of guidelines that have been set for you for to me. keep you on the train yeah. tracks. I, I stay, my business coach taught me this a few years ago. I, I, I stay in my lane. I do the 5% that I'm good at and yeah. leave the rest to Jen and Lori. Well, what's your, what's your favorite part? What's the thing that you love to do within the business? Talking to the clients. Yeah. 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 And I like when the clients call and there's, there's an, a, a hiring emergency, they need this person ASAP because someone got sick or can we fill the spot? And because of my network, I'm able to pull it off. Yeah. For you me, triage with your network. That's great. Yeah. 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 You're, you're a guy that knows a guy as they, yeah. as they say. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, looking at you bring up Excel spreadsheets. I'm a financial planner and that's not my specialty. So I have a business partner that, that handles that part of it. So um a lot of business owners make their decisions through spreadsheeting things and looking at analysis. Other people just go straight on gut. Where do you fall on that decision-making spectrum? 
yeah, I'm a straight on the gut type of guy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I do not hem and haw. <laughs> if it feels um, right. If it feels, feels right. Wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, that's sort of where I stand too. I'm, I'm a very uh, emotional. Sometimes that can backfire a little bit where you, uh, but having the support system of an, someone that actually will analyze whether or not my feelings are correct or not is, is a really helpful thing. Yeah. And, and I have two, two of those people, one in each business that is constantly second, they're constantly second guessing me not to, not because they're worried I'm going to make the wrong decision, but just, just to make sure. Absolutely. And, you know, you have to have that, right? Uh, that's why I think we're successful. Um, and because they're smarter than I am. Yeah. And when you, when you surround yourself with people that are good at things that you're not, that's, you know, that's, right. a, that's usually a, a winning formula. Um, talk Absolutely. a little bit about the uh, TV sports course that you created. Yeah. You know, um, I, I learned from mentors at, at all different stages of my career. I always had a mentor, whether it was when I first started out to when I started traveling to whatever it was to, to a business coach, to a LinkedIn coach, to a writing coach. Uh, so I've always had mentors and I wanted to be able to give back to the younger people it, that are just getting into the business. Cause like other industries um, it's hard to know who the clients are. It's hard to get, into the business and it, there's no school to obtain the skill of a camera operator. Hmm. You just have to do it. And yeah. it's hard to get on. It's hard to get the training. And because of uh, most of these jobs are union oriented jobs. Hmm. Uh, that's another barrier or mm -hmm. obstacle because you can't get on the job without being in the union. And the only way to get in the union is to get one day of work. Right. So, and to get that day of work, the union list has to be exhausted, meaning right. everyone has to be called in that position before we can call off the list. Yep. So I developed the TV sports course to bring, we brought in uh, all the equipment that you would see when you'd show up to work if you've never seen it, we taught people how to coil cable, how to build cameras, how to break the cameras down, how to put a microphone on people, all, all different positions. And we wrote, I wrote a book or a manual on what to do from the second you park your car to the second you get back in your car at, at work. Amazing. Uh, for camera people, how to shoot base, baseball, basketball, soccer, hockey, boxing from every camera position. Um, as an audio person, what your responsibilities are as utility, what your responsibilities are, um, how to speak to clients, how to email clients, you know, all, all things like that. That's amazing. That, that seems yeah. to make a, you know, the idea of having a manual where from when you get out of your car to you get back in, it has to be super valuable for a place where you can't go to school for that for the most part. Yeah. There's no school. Yeah. Um, I, I had an interesting experience a couple of weeks ago. I went to go see Dave Chappelle at the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia. And um, half of the audio in of the audio in a quarter of the arena was out. Ooh. And everyone kept yelling, we can't hear you. And it got very frustrating. He stopped probably four or five times. And oh, really? A couple of the guys that opened for him, they stopped a couple of times too. Anyway, long-winded way to say, have you ever had a ginormous tech emergency and what's your level of panic when that happens? Yeah, several, the biggest, well, let's call it, we can use the word disaster was during the XFL in 2000. It was the second, I think it was the second game and we were operating off of a generator. Okay. And um, I'm trying to remember exactly what happened. So there's a dial on the generator truck that when the truck is in transit, it's turned one way. Okay. And when the truck is parked, it's supposed to be turned the other way to op so they can gauge how much fuel is in the generator. Okay. The generator powered the TV trucks. Oh, God. And powered the big screens. So the dial was not turned in the proper m direction. They didn't know how much fuel was in the generator truck literally at the beginning of the game, literally right before kickoff. Ooh, oh no. The TV truck powered down. Oh my and God. NBC had a, a backup game 
But since it was the beginning of our game, no one at the backup game was prepared to take the production. So there was like 30 seconds of black on there. Oh, and no. in the TV world, that's like an eternity. Dead air. That was no like good. that was like the iceberg <laughs> of the XFL, like the Titanic. You know, yeah. that was it was it literally sunk to ship. Uh, that, I, I would see how that would that would happen. Um so going back to, to sort of like advice that you would give other business owners, what would you say to a business owner that doesn't want to incorporate any aspect of video into their marketing? That they're making a total mistake because uh, I feel like this is a culture of, you know, quick, 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 quick hits, especially with the social platforms. Um, you want to be able to do, you know, quick videos. Um, uh, you want to be lit well, look good in terms of, uh camera wise and you you want to sound good you want to have a good microphone yeah that makes some sense um so if you look back on your on your path of being a, an entrepreneur what do you what would you say is the lowest point the lowest point um n- not realizing i was an entrepreneur I, I i i was you know for the longest time I was traveling between an NBC job and a, and a WWE wrestling job with, you know, four to five flights a week, not a lot of sleep, Mm -hmm. always tired and running this business on the side. Yeah. It, but I never realized it until my wife pointed out that my business on the side was making me more money (laughs) than I was traveling four to five days a week working as a camera operator. So until I flipped that switch and went from a camera operator with a business to a entrepreneur that does some camera work on the side, yep, you know, that was, that was really it. And now I don't even shoot camera anymore. I think that is such a great answer and such a common one that entrepreneurs have. It's like, Oh, Holy crap. This is actually like a real business. Yeah. I didn't even realize it. Um, that that's such a great answer. Definitely something that that we hear a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Um, well, this has been awesome. I really really enjoyed this. So we're going to hit you with the rapid fire questions now. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Brian. Um, what's your favorite game or event that you ever shot? I have two. Uh, okay. Sorry, the Kentucky Derby and um, the. Beijing and London Summer Olympics. Oh, cool! Who won the Kentucky Derby when you uh, when you? I, I've done twenty something. Of okay, them, so <laughs> I have no idea. No idea. Yeah, <laughs> that list. Uh, who is the your favorite professional athlete that you ever met? I gotta say, probably Michael Jordan. Okay, yeah, that. I mean, that's a pretty tough one to uh, to beat. You know, um, yeah. well, what do you do to stay active? When you're not and Reggie Jackson, sorry, Reggie oh, Jackson cool. as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, what do you do to stay active? I have a very regimented workout schedule. I get up at five in the morning every day. I do an hour or two of business work, and then I do an hour to an hour and a half uh, workout routine, uh, cardio, cardio, vascular workout every day, as well as strength training. Amazing! It's so crazy to me how common every entrepreneur. That first yeah. of all, they all work out. Second of all, they all work out early in the morning. Everyone wakes up early. You know, it's it's yeah. fascinating to me that that is a just a built in characteristic trait that almost every entrepreneur has. It, it's non negotiable. And, and on the days that like um, that it, it, it can't, I can't do it, it. It's just I can't get past it. Yeah, it's funny. I always say so. I wake up uh, similar time, like four thirty. I start working out around five five fifteen. But I actually need it more for my brain than I need it more for for you know like my body. It's just like the best thing. I feel like when I don't work out for a couple of days, my brain goes crazy. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just, and you know just uh, I, I ride the Peloton for uh, for cardio and then do my own straight training at home. And it's yeah, I love it. Amazing. That's awesome. Well, this was really great. I I, I love talking to you. I could. I'm sure we could. Uh, talk sports stories all day, but, um, <laughs> you know, unfortunately we don't have the time for that. So if, if everyone wants to learn a little bit more about you and your, and your business, where do they go? Uh, you can go to howiezales.com and all of our business websites. You can reach from there, uh, at Howard Zales on LinkedIn. Amazing. That's awesome. Um, if you want to connect with me on untapped, that's where I rate all these beers. My username is BR Carney seven. 
And to learn how my firm helps business owners with their financial planning, visit riversedgeadvisors.com. All right, moment of truth. Oscar Bulu's Mutant X, very strong, very potent. Uh, give it a three out of five. I'd probably have it again. All right, Howie. Well, I really appreciate your time. This was great and uh, best of luck. Cheers to you. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate it. Thank you for listening to Happy Hip Hour with an Entrepreneur, sponsored by Rivers Edge Advisors. For more information on how Rivers Edge Advisors can help you, visit their website at riversedgeadvisors.com. If you'd like to connect with Brian Carney for business advice or just to share a beer, follow him on Instagram at riversedgeadvisors underscore LLC. 